Salutations, everyone, and welcome back to TNO, The Lassies of Europe. I'm your host, Mr. Mokalever, of course. And we must talk about the work ahead. The closest thing to a father Dmitry Yazov had ever known was dead. As a plain, unmarked casket was dropped unceremoniously into the ground, rain cascading around it, and the supposed honor guard lazily shoveled clumps of mud into the grave. Yazov's gaze fell to the, his clenched, shaking fist. It took all he had to restrain himself. He had hoped, foolishly, he now knew, that with his ascension as a general, he would finally be able to make some change. Perhaps a rot within the League's officers would dissipate with the promotion of a fresh young face. Obviously, Yazov reflected bitterly he was wrong for the most part anyway. A precious few had slowly but surely become subservient to him, which granted Yazov an advantage he refused to relinquish. He strode away from the funeral, boots splashing against the mud. There is much to be done against the grain, though. Gentlemen, Yazov intoned, I am honored by your presence and your willingness to listen to me, of course. Yazov was per perfectly aware that many of the men in the room would prefer to see him shot than listen to someone they regarded as an upstart firebrand, yet he carried on. As a new Glavkovac of the Black League, I would like to make it clear how I intend to exercise my new role. Yazov took a deep breath. <clears throat> And the last day of our dearly departed comrade Karbyshev. There was no respect for authority among the higher ranks of our organization. Our founder, a living example of the principles we all seek to emulate, was ignored and regarded as little more than a figurehead. His wise counsel was spurned and our mission corrupted by bureaucratic cliques. He could see the discontent and evident among some of the men seated before him, but he carried on. While I have no intention of punishing those responsible for the system, I certainly do not intend it to let it continue. Yazov glanced through the table at Sakharovsky and others he had brought with him. I have at my side a staff of eminently capable officers and generals, and with their help, as well as I hope yours, I intend to make this organization into something of which our dear leader, Dmitry Mikhailovich, would be proud. <clears throat> Yozov had long imagined this moment and satisfaction it might bring the heady rush of making a fateful decision manifest with carefully chosen words, but no such feeling came, and as Yazov met Abu Kumov's hateful, beady-eyed stare, sickening, head-spinning realization washed over him. There was no turning back now. The Rubicon had been crossed, and this was war. Yakta Alea Dest. Oh, boy. Very nice in the right hand. Evan G. Savintsev was the kind of man you'd want, you, or that you wanted on your side. A massive, aggressive brute, he began his career in the army as a special forces man, trained in forced, enforced entry tactics. He was nevertheless not a quiet man. When he entered the room, you felt his presence. He... His feet could be heard stomping the hallway away. Still, the man was intelligent. Whenever Dmitry Yazov was away, plotting or doing business, Seven Stev was right behind him, plotting in tandem. The two were twins separated at birth, both able to come to the same conclusions at the same time. Some even dared to say they were friends, but that kind of talk was frowned upon for supreme leaders. A promising young recruit, Seven Stev, Seven Stev, posed as a formidable challenge to anyone who seizes the aging leadership of Omsk and decides that perhaps it would not be a hard state to topple. We shall see, ultimately. So, uh, we're still doing our focus with, well, that's actually nothing here, because we need to secure control of the capital. We need to secure control of the capital and the capital and the capital. So, we have decisions to make. So, we have Reign of Yazov. We need to train new recruits, as well as silence a descent. We can do some raiding and looting, stuff like normal, and building new schools. So, let's go ahead <clears throat> and do this. If you'd like to read about this, go right ahead. So, let's see. Policies need to be implemented and countless procedures that must be reformed. Good. I want a science descent so that we get... Is that a good thing to do? I don't, I'm not really sure. Like I said, I haven't played this off screen yet. So, we're going to lose stability. But we're going to get more political power. We're also going to train new recruits. And let's see what happens. We have also some comments to go through, but we'll be ending the corruption. Are you really sure about this, sir? Yazov glared at the officer holding the new memo he'd just been finished typing. The young man seemed to shrink away from his gaze, clutching his piece of paper in front of himself like a pathetic shield. Did I stutter, Lieutenant? <clears throat> no, 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 no. Of, of course not, sir. It's just that, well, <clears throat> this seems exceptionally harsh to me. Dozens of executions, hundreds of arrests. Some of these people are the most senior members of the League. Can we really afford to get rid of them? Every person on that list is a coward and a thief. And most of them are traitors, too. The Black League has no place for them anymore, and we must show the members of the League what happens to those who obstruct our progress now. I would like to encourage you to deliver that memo as fast as you possibly can if you don't want to be considered an obstructionist yourself. The lieutenant opened his mouth to reply, and then thought better of it, snapped out a quick salute, and almost sprinted out the door. It brought Yazov a small amount of satisfaction to see the fear in the man's eyes. Respect was all well and good, but fear was the best way to ensure obedience. Karbyshev had been a wise man, but he had failed to realize that. He had placed his trust in people who had exploited him and abused him. Yazov was not so forgiving, as the scum were about to find out. Before Russia can be redeemed, the Black League must be. Actually, <clears throat> Matthias assumes control of the Gulf. Uh, 
Karvishev, the general from the last episode, the first one. He's quite an interesting fellow, if you read about him. Especially, I mean, there's... Obviously, the TNO devs read about how he actually passed away, you know, or was killed in real life. So, I thought that was kind of interesting, reading about how he did eventually die in our timeline. So, Alright, let's go ahead and prepare a raid against these guys. I think we'll probably do okay against them. So, uh, Low overcomes the high. Low overcomes the high. Existence is subjugation. Yazov let this line hang in the air for a few seconds before carrying on. It is a subjugation of reality to one's own desire to exist. Nothing can be achieved. Without such power and without such power, one lives only at the mercy of those who are stronger. As a grim a reality as it may be, we must recognize that there is no inherent right to existence, to life. We can only rely on ourselves. This simple fact it is this. Ideals have failed Russia. It is a system of ideals that place unworthy people in positions of power. In the First World War, Russians bled and died for the sake of an incompetent man who did nothing to merit leadership. In the second, they did the same, but only for different men. We have seen the products of such systems and paid the price for the failures, but no more. Yazov paused. He knew what was coming. His stomach clenched, but he knew there was no other way. He, it was what Karbyshev would have wanted, but this is what we had to be. This is what he had to be. The Black League's sole objective is the survival of Russia in the face of the coming trial. To do this, we cannot make the same mistakes as our predecessors. Going forward, weakness in leadership will not be tolerated. I am hereby issuing a decree allowing the removal from command of an ineffective officers. From this day forward, any official, no matter how high ranking, can be brought before a court martial by the consent of ten of his direct subordinates and another officer... Um, and, and another officer. The lawlessness, uh, lawless wasteland permits only the strong to survive. We will bring this principle into our leadership in order that the new Russia we are building may be sharpened into a weapon with no amount of German bombs can break. We must make the Russian the apex predator of the Eurasian continent. This is your commander speaking. The, our cause is just. Victory will be ours. Good night. Storm clouds loom. Can't wait. Especially as we don't have any focus to do, which is breaking my heart. Revolts in Eskulkul and Tara. As of this morning, the Black League garrisons in the outlying towns of Is Isilkul and Tara have done the unthinkable and openly rebelled against Omsk authority, seeking the overthrow of newly minted Supreme Commander Yazov, the officer cliques. <clears throat> have seized control of both towns and what is a clear bid to take command of the whole of the Black League. While there's undoubtedly some reason being used by the officers to justify the revolt, at this time no formal statement has been issued in any case. Such a pretext matters little. Yazov has made his intentions to remove these little aging, inefficient officers eminently clear. And it can be assumed that the mutineers are fighting first and foremost for their own careers. Exactly who is in command of the revolt is unclear. While the uprising in Isikul is being re reportedly headed by one general, V.S. Abakumov, an NKVD veteran who joined the Black League in its early days, it is still uncertain who, if anyone, is actually leading the rebellion in Tara. Regardless, this turn of events represents a dire situation for the Black League as a whole, and it seems that the whole organization now hangs from the precipice, the desperate acts of selfish men. But at least here in Omsk, we have some coffee. We're running the gauntlet. Comrade Supreme Commander. Gunshots and shouts echoed from the floor below as internal security agents reasserted control over some cadres that had apparently gone rogue. I'm aware, Yazov stated curtly. He sent the aide out of the room with a wave of his hand as his mind roiled. If only Karabashev was here. I'm not ready for this, he thought, before swatting the errant out of his mind. Truth be told, while on the exterior he was quite adept at putting forth a brave face within the pressure... It was nearly overwhelming. He couldn't help but feel like a child dressed up in his father's work clothes with the weight of the world on his unruly shoulders. These thoughts were interrupted when General Saf Sakharovsky, Sakharovsky burst in. Glavkovark, uh, he said breathlessly, we have work to do. So it would seem, Alexander Mikhailovich, Yazov replied, trying his best to exude the confidence that he lacked as he stood up from his desk and gathered his things. Mobilize everyone we've got, even the RSBS. Or RSBs. Lock down the city once we're in control. We, our plan, we plan our next move. Sakharovsky nodded and summoned an aide. Yazov felt decisive. And he imagined himself like a Karbyshev, always in control, ready to run the gauntlet and come out unscathed. But with him, he had no idea what was going to happen next. A step into the unknown. Okay, I just want to I just do some raids, man. That's all I want to do right now. Under lock and key. Then, oh, the should be paid too. Great. And actually, before we read this, I want, I want to see this one real quick. Let's see. Is anything else going down? Oh, I'm going to go here. Uh, besides poverty, so that's going up by 1.5, 2, going down by 1.25, going up by 2. Industrial expertise. That's the one uh, we really need to focus on if we can. But we don't really have that, so equipment it is.
under lock and key. The, the night the lockdowns began in Omsk was a grand painting, died forever upon the canvas of history. A s sky of somber black was smeared over the, city of the, over the city on that malignant night, punctuated only by stars and the blighted smog that strangled their light. Omsk was, it always, was as it always was, a mournful husk of what it had been. The shattered bones of an old world painted across the horizon, reaching upon to the heavens, but forever trapped with the discarded people who had built them in a past age. But over the top of the city, a layer of atmosphere was brushed thick air rage painted in broad strokes of oppression and fear. The wash of crackled boards murmured through half-broken speakers, demanding the citizens return to their homes and mix anxiety into the pallet. Or pallet. Lower down in the dark bowels of the city, the composition was ongoing. Thousands of dark-clothed oppressors, each one a brush, painted their heavy boots across the streets. All those wide-eyed rabble viewing the great scene from the windows could do nothing but accept the artistry before them. Yazov had become the grand painter of the city, perhaps all of Russia. And soon the old guard would drown under a layer of vengeful black ink. And like a painting, the old god shall hang. What's their supply like right now? You guys are pretty good. The Battle of Omsk. No doubt that Yazov will emerge from the struggle as an undisputed leader of the Black League, except for a small number of fools. Unfortunately, they happen to be well-armed and motivated fools. The routes out of the cities have been blocked off, and the patrols routed throughout the countryside to catch anyone who manages to, manages to trickle out through less conventional means. Soldiers and forces and bloodhounds sniff through the city, finding each and every stubborn pocket of the old guard. It costs lives to burn them out of their holes, but we are prepared to pay that price without complaint. With scores of soldiers surging into any traitor's bastion we find, it's only a matter of time before the city's ours, a new day for Omsk. Artillery, anti-tank, and yeah, that's good. The city secured. Yeah, I do want to get a 2,000 guns, that'd be nice. Uh, put you above them for now. Put you above them as well. Actually, put you above them because it takes longer for us to build this, perhaps, then. Well, actually, no. This is. There you go. City secure. The street of Omsk are silent once more. Dmitry Yazov, Elder Akavashen, a newly installed Glav Korvark of the Black League, has defeated an initial attempt by conservative officer cliques to dethrone him and derail his plans for radical reform within the Black League. As the last old guard holdouts within Omsk itself surrender to loyalist forces and are led away to either redemptionary service or the firing squad, it seems that Yazov's new orders survived its real first test. As the dust settles in the Black League's capital, all eyes are now upon the uprisings by conservative officers in the outlying towns of Isilk, Isilkul, and Tara, which still threatened to strangle the Glavkovarks' Darwinian vision in its crib, survival of the fittest. A chance at redemption? Penal labor? I love penal labor. I'm tap the black gold. Oh, don't make, don't make, don't mind me if I start tapping stuff. Industrial equipment, of course, is what we're going to do first. Rebuild the railways. Omsk infrastructure is falling into disarray despite General Karbyshev's pleading with the officers and the rabble efforts to maintain the train lines. The utilities were never carried out. This must end if our aim of transforming Omsk into the Black League stronghold is to be accomplished. Redemptionary brigadiers, brigadiers, in addition to other duties, will be sent to repair the railroads, rebuild the roads, and fortify the homes. Not bad. And. Yeah, we gotta do this up too. Has not selected silence descent. Train new recruits. Oh. Oh. Oh boy. If not completed within 245 days, the old guard will, will overwhelm us. Well, crap. Well, we gotta wait till that one's done, so. Oh, let's go and scavenge loot. That's always good to do. Oh, always good. And this coffee's not too bad either. And a chance at redemption. We must not forget the original purpose of the Redemptionary Brigades. They are not a dumping ground for petty political rivalries, but a chance for those who committed crimes against Russia or those who aided the Teuton in the past to redeem themselves through the shedding of blood. Henceforth, General Yazov has declared that the course of the Redemptionary Brigades will be righted immediately. Across the lands of the League, thieves and criminals will be given this new start, as well as any other lost souls we might find in the future. The one exception for the benevolent rule is, of course, the Germanic Teuton. After all, you don't give a disease the chance to redeem itself. You simply stamp it out. Let's go ahead and uh, do that recruit first. Is kill cool, which I'm sure I'm saying that wrong, but it is what it is. Ah, Madagascar's falling apart on guns and givings. Uh, Mikhail Voronin was a powerful figure to many. Having secured or served along the front lines against the Germans, he may not have been an officer back then, but by God in heaven did allow for some heavy qualifications to be given to him in the election for leadership in a small village. Plus... Being a father helped out a lot in being able to know what it means to do some good things for a community. However, it also felt like as if none of that mattered in these next few moments, or all of it mattered. Uh, Voronin sure, sure as heck didn't know anymore uh, as the caravan pulled into the snowy thicket. Out of the middle car stepped the certain Mr. Leganov had been tasked with meeting the one he was meant to coordinate an arms deal with. However, the p with potential death on the horizon thanks to his lord's attack against the people of Zatalus, Mikhail was left unsure. 
So, Mr. Legonov, I know that the sales are currently off the table for today. However, with Mayor Council Dragunov's expertise and wisdom, perhaps there is a chance that we can come to agreement. Mikhail said, of course, his bright smile could do wonders for many. However, no level of falsified pleasantries could mask anxiety riding Mikhail's spine. Your people don't get their... Your people will get their guns, don't worry. The Mayor Council approved of the further transaction for the near future with your people. We shall meet in the same spot bi-weekly. You'll get guns. You'll pay us, got it? Mikhail, suffering the effects of shocks, nervousness, and dread, was amazed by the success of the operation. Absolutely, sir. Whatever we need done, we can prove I... But before Mikhail Voronin could finish what he had to say, the gun dealer's already turned around and heading back to his caravan as fierce engines blitz against the Russian snow. Al's forgiven, I suppose, in a quiet op. Uh, before we do that, let's get some anti-tank equipment. In the moment, lying prone in a segment of sewer pipe on the fifth floor of a construction site that had laid fallow since the days of Bukharin, Inokentai Inno felt oddly comfortable. Not physically, it was cramped, damp, and smell of mold, but in a more existential sense. This kind of war, the kind he now felt himself immersed in, was something he could rationalize and understand. In the last few weeks of chaos and civil disorder had been a disorienting, vertigo-inducing sequence of events for Inokenti, or Inokentai a veteran of the failed effort to reclaim West Russia in the 50s. The war that was now being fought was nothing like the one he had seen waged 10 years ago. The conflict within, within the Black League came in, went in fits, and starts with brief engagements interspersed with long, endless hours and days of tension and speculation. The front lines seemed to appear and disappear as, at will. As political machinations within the higher ranks made, foes suddenly become friends and vice versa. Rarely could Inno... In I know, maybe it's I know, Kente, enjoy the adrenaline rush of a straight fight or the feeling of well-executed infiltration, but today was such a day, and as he looked at the bunker complex a few broken city blocks away, he couldn't help but feel quite pleased with himself. A distant thud from within the compound that Eno can can't hey, know that his work had come to a bloody fruition in one way or another. The handoff of the explosives of Ladin Laden briefcase last night had gone off without a hitch. It seemed that his contact had successfully sent off the device at least. It was until they pointed the signal. A staccato series of six gunshots and groups of threes that Inno Kente knew that Victor Abukamov was dead. Target liquidated. Nice job, guys. Well, if we can buy stuff, we might as well, right? Not bad. And we're still building roads. Oh, under clear sky. Sophia had come like the bombings. The grown-ups talked about them. It was like, like it was a problem. The instructor of their youth cadre lectured to them on how the evil on how, how evil the Germans were and how their bombs killed outsiders on the surface, but Sophia didn't believe it. For one thing, she'd never seen an outsider. She'd only heard stories how they ate dirt, wore rags, lived in holes in the ground instead of barracks, with well, the cadre of their instructors. The Basia, the new kid, always cried whenever they told stories like this, but everyone knew they were true. <clears throat> Whenever the bombs came, the sirens would start to play, and the whole cadre would be sent down in the shelters beneath the surface. So instead of doing physical exercises or learning about the Germans, the children would run through their tunnels, playing war, while the bomb sounds thumped above, rumbling like soft thunder. But now these days were becoming rare and rare. Sophia and her cadre were now braving the outdoors more and more often, and these coveted playtimes beneath the earth became less and less frequent. Lectures on the Germans became more frequent, and physical drills and improving grounds were becoming the new norm. Only occasionally interrupted by a few lonely aircraft in the sky. Playtime's over, it seems. And if you'd like to read about the equipment... For those Zytos equipment, go right ahead. I mean, this usually happens every campaign. So, excellent. Did we actually get that stuff? We actually got none of that anti-tank stuff. A chance of redemption, though, is really nice to have. All right. Ooh, equipment. Land auction is not bad. Improve our industry. Let's go ahead and do a tap the black gold. Oil, Omsk, fertile oil fields are perhaps one of our greatest advantages. With, for with this black gold, we are able to fuel our aircraft tanks and keep our factories running as smoothly as possible. Efforts to exploit the region's reserves will be expanded and will receive additional resources, for if we are to properly prepare for the future, we will need to take every advantage of every opportunity that presents itself. What falls faster, a man or shares? Out with a crash. We're still not done with research yet. New prospects. All I'm saying is I like things better when we spend all day chopping down trees and the new arrivals are washed up politicians and bureaucrats that piss off the wrong person. These guys, these new guys, look like criminals. You're telling me you would rather prefer to spend the rest of your life toiling away in a prison camp and not have a chance to work for your way out, work for your way out of here? Hey, back at prison camp, there wasn't a real, really real chance. We were going to die, now we're basically cannon fodder and anyone who's accidentally survives might get promoted into the Black League. We're not cannon fodder, we get treated almost as well as regular soldiers. This may come as a shock to you, Andreev, but they're cannon fodder too. Saying stuff like that is how you wound up in here in the first place. You act like I don't know that. I just wish we were still allowed to actually work off our debt to the League rather than having to risk dying for it. Are you saying you wouldn't lay down your life for Russia and the League? You know what? The Commissar isn't around, so screw it. Yes, that's exactly what I'm saying. They're always telling us how important it is that we'll be 
that we be willing to make the ultimate sacrifice for Motherland, but what has Russian given me? What is what has Motherland given me? I was born in a bunker, grew up hiding from bombs and raiders, and before I was fully grown, I'd been shipped to a concentration camp because I had a big mouth. You haven't lost it. I'm well aware of that, Andreev. Well, I just want redemption, and now the service brigades actually offer that. And I just don't want to die. Just don't want to die? Pfft, come on. We're all going to die together in the end anyways. Well, maybe not together. Probably alone. Everyone dies alone, so. Well, for the most part. How's this coming along? <clears throat> really hurts me that I can't make any civilian factories. Oh, after we tap in that black gold, we're going to be undoing Buharin's mess. The man who lost the last trial, Nikolai Buharin, entertained foolish dreams of economic prosperity as a resort of the so-called Siberian plan, a program which the East would become an industrial stronghold to the rival of the great powers of the world. Though perhaps some of our Eastern neighbors have reaped the rewards of the General Secretary's fantasies, the men and women of the Black League have only re reaped German bombs rained upon their homes. Nevertheless, the idea of mass industrialization is not a poor one, and some remnants of the Siberian plan here east of the Ural still stand. We will use these relics of a bygone age to transform Omsk into a fortress factory, one that will churn out the instruments used to defend Russia one last time. Very good. An ultimatum. Ah! From the people down south. From the people of Kok Shetau. We welcome your advances. We do have one loot. That's nice. Is there anything else we do here? Oh, we still have some time for that. We still need to save some political power for that stuff, too. And organization-wise, how are we doing? It is April 19th, 1963. Uh, well... I see one division. We don't have all the organizations much, as much as I would have liked, but I only see, I see two divisions. And it's defeated if you like to read about this. Go right ahead. We get some more stability and political power, which is exactly what we could use for Takotara. There's quite a bit of lag. Is something falling apart again or something? Um, they don't have anything. They don't have anything. Yeah, these people don't have a lot. What a shame. Daddy Dimitri. Mmm. All right, after that, let's do the, the new order. A new dawn has risen over Omsk and the League. For too long, we've been nothing but a petty officer's club, an undisciplined rabble constantly devouring, goring, battling itself. General Yazov's iron fist will be brought down upon the ruffians like a hammer. Or any that dare stand against a new order will be run into the ground. If General Karbyshev made a mistake, it was that he was too merciful. Infantry motorized. At this point, I really want to get another division out. We're going to add another one, too. Oh, look at this. Oh, look at this. Industrial reform. I like this idea. Oh. Has not selected. Infiltrate. Okay, so we can't do this at the same time as these stuff. I would love to do this stuff, but from my understanding, we need to put down resistance at all at every single point. Oh, we can do raids now. Uh, against those guys? Uh, hmm. <clears throat> uh, I don't know, man. Two men. 41,000. They f they literally have five divisions. You guys have four to eight. You guys have less manpower in the field, though. Three to five. Uh. Uh. We don't have any piercing power for that. And over here, do, do they have anything? We might actually be able to do that, maybe, if we're fast enough. You know what? We could risk it. I'm going to risk it. After the new order, honor the old general. Why we fight. I like the stability. The officers have forgotten why the League was founded in the first place. We're not just a mere breakaway from the West Siberian People's Republic, nor one of Rokokovsky's idealists. We're soldiers of the Black League, and our only goal is to survive what is to come. The Germans will march once more. The goal will be the total and physical annihilation of every Russian man, woman, and child. We cannot, must not, let this happen come to pass. This simple truth is why General Yazov must stamp out resistance so brutally. The only other option is a jackboot on our throats. Or death. Valukin's exit. <clears throat> After accordance with General Order GL-001, Specialist Arbitration Kadra 055081 concludes, Valukin, Konstantin Nikolaevich of Kadra 00 or 000002 is found guilty on all accounts of abuse of military authority and dereliction of collective duty. Defendant is hereby removed from his position or reprimanded to the custody of the IS. <clears throat> Kodrick's responsible for its detention has temporarily been placed under the direct command of Glakovic D.T. Yazov in order to prevent a conflict of interest. Recommended sentence is indefinite redemptionary service. The Kodrick finds that Valukin, Valukin, 
did on numerous occasions, willfully and knowingly, utilizes command authority to advance a personal agenda, and concludes that he pursued prosecution against no fewer than 16 of his own subordinates with no lawful cause and without conducting an investigation. Investigation by this cadre suggests that several of these individuals have personal disputes with him, making this an abuse of authority under Article 56 of the Codex of Military Justice. The cadre further finds that Bakhlukin, or Baluchin, engages in behavior which is classified under Black League military laws, cliqueism, and dereliction of collective duty under Codex Article 13, Section 1, and deliberately and knowingly kept critical information and intelligence regarding anti-nationalist activities from his then lawful superior, Glakovark D. M. Karbyshev, with an eye towards instead providing such information to his own ex-NKVD acquaintances. The cadre nominates uh, 1. Drozdov Yuri Ivanovich, presently of cadre 040110, to replace him pending the approval of the defendant's immediate superior. Approval granted. Oh, so we still lose the same amount. We pretty much lose nothing. We gain, we gain nothing. We just change the people who is in charge. As you will. Wait. Wait, hold on. Um. Hold on. Wait a second. Uh. Uh. Are, are we at war? Okay, so this is Siberian Black Army. <laughs> I'm like, I don't see any war justification. Wait, wh wh Siberian Black, what? <laughs> no, 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 no. We are... Well, we were... Well, I think we are the Siberian Black League. But, oh. oh. I, I, I got scared. I'm like, I don't think I can fight Tomsk yet. <laughs> Abu Kamov assassinated. The regime in Omsk now place, takes another step towards consolidation. As the officers push, Puch and Iskilku collapses into anarchy with the death of its leader and sole unifying figure, Viktor Abu Kamov. At the hands of an assassin's bomb, an NKVD man who found Karbyshev's ideal of a strengthened and renewed Russia attractive for all the wrong reasons, it is unlikely that many outside of the officer cliques held together will mourn its passing. Within hours of Abu Kamov's death, tensions among his shell shocked co conspirators soon have boiled over into open warfare, and with gunfire reported inside the. Uh, is it cool? Black League units were able to sweep in and mop up any remaining resistance with relative ease. Yuzov's dreams lives on for another day, but there's no rest yet for the Glakovark. A revolt still festers in Tarda. Target liquidated. As much as I want to do industrial stuff, I really, really want to do this stuff. Actually, this stuff doesn't really mean too much to me. Resource efficiency again, no one cares about that too much. Construction speed, it's already pretty minimal. Cons consumer goods, and whatever. Industrial buildup is actually really good to do, but we're going to tackle this problem first. Anything else? Nope. Oh, we, we wanted to raid these guys, but now they're at war. That sucks. Ah. Ah, new age of siege. Ah, new siege attire. Come on, come on, come on, yelled the cadre leader over the ragged beats of boots on the dirt road. 408966 forward. For a moment, he was back at Volokolomsk in 1940, fighting a losing battle against the oncoming German tide. And then, a moment later, he was on the outskirts of Tar once more, and distant gunfire beating out a harsh tattoo on his ears. Cadre leader Pavlov's cohort was certainly not used to actual frontline combat, let alone against men who, had, until recently, been their sworn comrades in arms. Then again, combat wasn't exactly in their job description. Pavlov's cadre was a reserve cadre known in Black League parlance as a Chidvyorka, or four, due to the fact that their six-digit designation began with that number. Normally, such units, often composed of older soldiers, as being seen as being past their prime, were relegated to the duties of keeping the non-league members in line, making sure that the civilians stayed quiet and met their production quotas. But today, as the days had before, it had not been an ordinary day. As he broke down the door of a gray, dreary civilian dwelling with a few chosen subordinates, Pavlov reflected on how utterly unthinkable this situation would have been only a few moments, a few months ago. Many ones who would have died to save were now his mortal enemies. With a splash of dust, a rotten door split open, termites wrangling from its fragments on the ground as the reserves, reservists rushed in and corralled the building's occupants. The civilians cowered before him in his black uniformed men with the practice ease sharpened by years of living under the Black League's protection. As usual, it didn't take much for them to comply. The end of a PPSH was excellent for loosening a person's tongue. Moments later, Pavlov had the target's location and rejoined the rest of his cadre back on the dusty road. The ring around Tar was almost complete, all in a day's work and a new age. I've not seen the city so busy since the days of the Union, and I've lived through some real stuff, bugged in, huffed as he swept the streets, the detritus of the morning's league drill still littering the gutters. Even a lowly dog's body such as him could feel the energy in the air. Vasily, a man bogged down with call more than an acquaintance, but not quite a friend, nodded in agreement. This new man yells off. He's got really it all planned out, hasn't he? I guess the Black League got tired of biting its own heels. Unless you want a one-way trip to the Redemption of Brigades, you'll bite your own gosh darn tongue, bogged in cast his eyes askance. But they appear to be alone for the time being. I may be a humble man, 
man from humble birth, but I, even I can see that things are changing here. It used to be that you could sweep these streets in pieces as long as you threw a salute to the league when they came your way. Now, I see them everywhere. I me up and down like they're evaluating whether it be, be better as a frontline infantry or as a bloody cannon fodder, which I guess is the same thing. Basilica gave him a woefully naive look. Every city needs civilians, Bogdan. Surely they'll find a use for you that isn't quite so bloody. As he spoke, a platoon of league cad cadets came marching down the street. Their eyes were steel, devoid of any emotion beyond pure determination and the slightest hint of rage and hate. The two civilians stood aside as they passed, and Bogdan dropped his voice to a resigned whisper as he spoke again. These aren't just broken men anymore. They have one purpose in mind, and that the purpose has no place for men like me. No place for civilians unless I'm holding a gun. Even the drugs will serve the league. Harkardin's dismissal. In accordance with General Order GL001, Specialist Arbitration in Cadre 05723 concludes. Harkardin Alexander Ivanovich of Cadre 000002 is found guilty of willfully inefficient of the exercise of his duties. Defendant is hereby removed from the position and reprimanded to the custody of the IS until a position for long term assignment has been determined. Recommended sentence is indefinite redemption of service. The cadre finds that the defendant did on numerous occasions resist the implementation of broad doctrinal reforms and new combat tactics, many of which at the time had already been proven effective in frontline skirmishes with Polkreshkinit fighters. On account of this failing, Black League forces under his command sustained heavy casualties and skirmishes with bandits. This is found to be in direct violation of General Order G001 and equally harms the ability of the Black League to fulfill the program of national action. Decisive action is thus warranted to protect the interests of all Russia. The cadre nominates one. Pitovranov, Evgeny Petrovich, president of the cadre, 040199 to replace him, pending the approval of the defense immediate superior approval, granted. It's time to scavenge for loot. I still have yet to play as a Siberian Black Army. But unfortunately, I'm all out of coffee. Let's go ahead and do some new tactics. The officer clicks with characteristic id idiocy. Command of the Redemptionary Brigades is a horde of meat shields. It's not uncommon for the entire unit to be wiped out in a single charge or for ill-equipped men to be sent against a far greater foe. This is not redemption, this is execution. The Redemptionary Brigades will be made to fight as soldiers fight, not as a peasant mob. Though they are still ultimately criminals seeking salvation, perhaps with better training they will be able to prove themselves more easily. Good, we got the land option done. The first step. Let's grab some more organization and reinforce rate. Beautiful. And actually, uh, we got a quite a way before we get there. Oh, actually, Novo Sibirsk is fighting. Oh, they're all fighting each other. Nice. Good, let them kill each other. Equip the auxiliaries. Old, malfunctioning rifles, jury rig machine guns, and poor rations are a common sight on the front lines of the Redemptionary Brigades. Because of the, frankly, abysmal condition of the equipment, the Brigades simply cannot fight as well as they might if given better weapons. General Yazov might be thus ordered that the Brigades receive any surplus equipment. Uh, quality weapons and better rations. Though they will never be as well equipped as a soldier of the League, the Redemptionary Brigadier will nevertheless be equipped to withstand the coming horrors. And there's going to be a lot of horrors. Hmm. After that, we shall do... Oh, some da some guys been approved uh, as PM in Thailand. Uh, General Karbyshev was, in the beginning, the light of the League, its guardian, teacher, father. Though some might have forgotten this, General Yazov is not. The sacrifices of those who came before must be honored and remembered, and thus, in a rare action that is not dedicated to <clears throat> preparation for war, General Yazov has ordered a memorial to General Karbyshev to be built in the center of Omsk, so that all may honor the general whose sacrifice will one day be the salvation of all of Russia. Alright, we've got enough loot. Workers, I like the workers, and we definitely gotta do expertise, just because now, after that... Wow, look at power tools. Five of months is not bad. This will not be going down any further. Once, of course, it is completed. General Karbyshev, what a good man. And actually, how's this coming along with uh, this? About a month left. Slightly more than a month, that's fine. Fortress Omsk? I like the civilian factory. Plant Hydra. Oh, that's not bad, but let's do this one. Fortress Omsk. If we survive the battles ahead, Omsk must become a fortress city like the of the likes of which the world has never seen. The bunkers underfoot. Already a great boon when the bombings fly overhead. We'll expand it to fit even more citizens, and the border forts that protect us against the forces of Kagnovich will become ever more impenetrable. When the work is done, the entirety of the German army could throw itself upon our walls, but they will not fall, no. The Germans would only meet death. And that is a good thing. And we get more war support. 7.5%? Hey, we actually have a positive amount of war support. Wow. The founder. We have lost a great man. A few in the assembly sat with their heads in their hands, some, it seemed, maybe weeping. Kardashev, or as so many of you knew him, Dmitri, was a mountain of a man. 
He was a man who seemed prophetic in his visions, in his beliefs, in the very way he carried himself. If one could not tell at the surface if Yazov was really crying. But we must not mourn his life with funerals and pleasantries. If Mr. Kabyshev were here today, do you know what we would what we would want us to do, or he would want us to do? Do you know what he would be pained not to see us do? Yazov took a well-placed pause. He would want us to prepare for the great trial. And prepare we must, man, prepare for our lives. Prepare for vengeance, and prepare for what he believed must be true. What is it? End of a speech. The command cadre burst into applause, slow and frightened. Good, they should be scared. They should be terrified, quaking in their boots. Plan Hydra. While some former officers in the League acted with reckless abandon, considering themselves immortal and irre irreplaceable figures, the General Yazov is no such fool. A stray bomb, a misfired rifle, a target assassination, or even a simple sickness are all deadly threats that could snuff out his life at any moment. The necessities. The creation of what has been unofficially dubbed Hi Plan Hydra. A comprehensive contingen contingency for the general's death. A clear and simple line of succession has been created, as well as a detailed plan for the creation of insurgency cells, should the great trial ultimately be lost. We will not go quietly into that good night, for if you cut off one head of the Russian serpent, two more shall take its place. Ah, Verona Conference ends as well. An interesting development from Italy. Good. The many-headed beast. Now this is going to be Terrifying to fight against. Novosibirsk? Oh my goodness. Oh boy. Every day, there were new tunnels, new bunkers, the new signs that war would soon come, to soon come to Omsk. Dozens of officers were personally supervising each industrial cadre as they pumped out more cement for this construction and had it laid in enormous sheets for command centers, armories, quarters, hangars, and other requ requisites of a f fortified city. This place was to be the shield that defended the Black League from all aggressors. Any attacker will be shot from five different angles, as the city planners had intended. Reinforcements could be rushed via tunnel to weak points, and ammo could be flooded to any part of the garrison that needed it. The city of Omsk was now a death trap for invading armies if they ever came. To most, it was just a grim reminder of the fate that awaited them should they fall under their duty. Thus, we shall not fail. Okay, uh, at this point, we just need some more stuff. I'm going to pop you out anyways, just because I'm tired of waiting. We need soldiers. Like, this is ridiculous waiting for this long. The Tara Urvolt crushed, which is good. Yazov, it seems, had been successful in running the gauntlet. In contrast to the revolt and Isil Kul, which ended in gunfire and intersign or internecine street warfare before the Black League liquidators swept the city clean of those who challenged Glav Kovarek's authority, the revolt and Tara died peacefully. While the news of Ab Abba Kumov's death and the collapse of the Isk Isikul uh, Puich seem to have not phased the Tara conspirators, the defeat of the old guard forces, and the subsequent encirclement of the city certainly has. The revolt's leaders now will run up the white flag of truce and have agreed to surrender to the Yazov forces in exchange for any potential death sentences being commuted to redemptionary service, though it remains unclear whether the Glav Kovarek actually intends to honor this pledge. Regardless, it seems that the old guard's rebellion has finally ended. Thus, always to traitors. Good. We have dealt with the old god. I guess it's time for us to do some build-up, perhaps? Finally? <laughs> Let's do that one, just because I want more factories. we got to get more factories. The old guard crushed. Against all odds, Yazov's gambit to assert control over the Black League has worked. The streets of Omsk is still cool, and Terra once again falls silent as loyalist forces liquidate the last rebel strongholds. strongholds. Kardashev's dying wishes to crush those that had perverted his vision have been fulfilled, though it remains unclear to what extent Yazov's vision of the League future aligns with that of his predecessor. With Abu Kamov and most of the old of their guard either dead or in hiding, Supreme Commander Yazov has now unlimited, near unlimited power to reshape the Black League as he sees fit. Every officer in the League must now watch their back and work with their hardest, work their hardest, lest they fall prey to the newly instituted efficiency investigations and find themselves demoted or worse. The League, it seems, is on course for major change. Although time will only tell what this will be good, this will be for good or for ill. Siberia holds its breath. We got a lot of political power. Hmm. A grip of cold iron. Well, we could probably do that. We've got a few months left for that stuff, so... Alright, then. The rot on the League, the bloated officers that lorded over their subordinates like feudal kings, has been excised. The officers are dead, and the cliques scattered to the wind, and the League's territory has been secured. General Yazov will not stand idle even in victory, however, and has declared that the Black League to enter a state of preparation for the reunification of Western Siberia. Kaganovich. The vulture he is ventures ever closer to our borders by the day, and Ros Rokosovsky swoops above him in a turn. War comes, and when it does, the League will be ready. We get more political power, division training time goes up, recruitable pop population factor goes down, more recovery rate, sounds falls, the many-headed many beast. Yazov felt uneasy. He held nothing but respect for his late mentor, but Karbyshev's death had exposed his greatest failure. He had given his life to build the Black League from nothing, but in his dogged efforts to save Russia, he had allowed the League to become reliant upon him to hold it together. Even with Yazov as his designated heir, the old journalist had seen Karbyshev's passing as an opportunity to break... To 
attempt to break free. Elzef knew that the League could not survive another succession crisis without him. The Black League would collapse from within and without. All this would have been for nothing. Russia would be doomed. Elzef resolved not to repeat the mistakes of his mentor. The Black League was bigger than any one man, and the Motherland's salvation could not depend on him alone. What the League needed was reorganization from top to bottom. The League would become an entity unto itself. Even its most prominent members would merely small parts of the Great Leviathan that would see Russia avenge. Yazov called his counselors and generals to his office. By the time they arrived, he was already hard at work. They labored long into the night until the plan was complete. They sent out the first orders the very next day. Every officer of the Black League was to nominate a successor to maintain the chain of command should be incapacitated. And a secondary successor should his first choice be incapacitated as well. Every position from his field marshal to sergeant would be required to have two levels of contingencies ready. The frontline troops would not be spared their share of responsibility. It would be their duty to prepare themselves to fight without their officers, to continue the League's struggle even if their leaders could not. The soldiers would obey their commanders, but they would fight for the Black League, because as long as the Black League existed, Russia could never die. For every one destroyed, two more shall arise. Okay, I'm, I'm getting really worried about Nova Sibiris, because they're looking real thick here. That's not bad. Actually, Factory was they're not that much stronger than us. So actually, okay, not bad. I certainly play as Nova Sibiris, as people do want me to play as well. And they're actually by Polar Krishkin. Okay, all right, whatever. But yeah, not bad. Oh, Baratia is still here. Real? They're still wait. They're still fighting the war. Wow. Salvin is not giving up without you know a fight. But oh boy. All right. Now what can we do here? Anything up top? Oh yeah. Oh, we can just reign of Yazov again. Um, silence descent. Do we have to keep doing this? I don't know. I need more manpower though. So. I don't really want to lose stability. Ooh. That's probably bad to do. Oh, so for 35 days, let's get the calculator out. And let's take a look. So 35 days times 0.75. So you get a total of 26.25 political power. So basically, you end up getting 6 political power. Is that worth doing? Silencing dissent? Is that really worth doing? Hmm. And that's what we'll do anyways. Good. The silence falls. The gunshots had stopped. Silence hung dense and frigid in the air. A thick aether, permeated by the fears of thousands. Lonely sentinels walked the streets of Omsk, watched by furtive glances through the blinds of darkened homes. Then it gave away as a whine, a crackle, and a pop echoed throughout the silent streets of the Black League's little swaths of earthly territory. Comrade soldiers of the Black League, in intoned, intoned a voice over the loudspeakers, this is Glakovark Dmitry Temayovich Yazov speaking. Some days ago, when our dear comrade Supreme Commander Karbyshev passed, I was named as designed or designated successor in his last will and testament. Somewhere in a bunker below Omsk, Yazov paused, knowing that he would now have to admit the unthinkable. There had been nearly a coup within the League. Certain opportunistic and treasonous elements of this League's leadership attempted to prevent the execution of our great Marshal's plan. They had been dealt with in accordance with the military justice of our League. I speak to you today to announce an exchange of course. Under the direct leadership of Glakovrk Karbyshev, our league was a model of efficiency and effectiveness and made tremendous progress in the reunification of the Russian nation and its total preparation for the Great Trial. Yet, for the past five years, the cancers began to grow within our state, festering, rotting away within our, within our very flesh and corrupting the current guidance of our founder. And today, it has been finally excised. In nature, there is no quarter for the weak, no mercy for those incapable of securing their own existence. The same is true in the affairs of human beings. We cannot, will not, must not let sentimentality, corruption, and favoritism come before our ultimate priority, ensuring that Russia has a future. We must make the Russian the apex predator of the Eurasian continent. In the coming days, I will speak to you again more and outline the changes that are in store. But for now, this is your commander speaking. Our cause is just. Victory will be ours. Good night. Peregrinus. Peregrinus. Peregrinus expectavi. And, oh, no focus yet. Okay. I wonder what's up next. I suppose this is normal. I think actually now we're just waiting for maybe the Germans to collapse. Just because sometimes that's what you usually have to do is wait for Germany to collapse. So then the Luftwaffe bombing stops. That's probably what we have to do here first. In the meantime, we could probably get some more scrap or something. Or, you know, tr well, we can't do anything there. Um, yeah, Zatas has nothing else right there. That kind of sucks. All right, so we got three. Can we build anything here yet? No, come on. We have to lower that by one. Can we build this instead? Oh, there goes Bratia. Goodbye, Bratia. Oh, the camp. That takes so long. You might as well just build this then. You literally just might as well build that. Um, trade an ultimatum. Oh, from oh, the Kokshetau people again. 
I love getting 1% more free stability. Especially with so many uh, soldiers we got. Well, good luck. How, how strong are these guys? They literally have like 10 combo with it max. Thank you. Enemies defeated. Thank you for the stability, political power, and early infantry rifles. All the stability is going to be... Oh, there goes Hitler. All the stability that we get, or all the political power that we get, will be spent on improving ourselves later on. Oh, tell you men. Oh, your turn, huh? Actually, I'm going to rep maybe replace you with this guy. There you go. Yazov. Yeah, we could do Ender Expert. We could wait, though. Give about five more seconds, and then we'll do it. Oh, look, they're actually not looking too good. Maybe they added down to maybe something. Five. Four. I'm not going to back down. Are you kidding me? Ah. Oh, and now Germany might be falling apart because of some serious lag. That's all right with me. That is totally okay with me. Okay. Boris Steckler. Steckler. A German Civil War. Actually, that was not too bad in terms of uh, what's going on here. German Civil War, nice. So it begins. Um, sometimes it just it makes the game lag extremely hard. Oh, we got this to do. Uh, consumer goods. Construction speed. Well, we need more manpower out of everything else. Consumer goods is not bad. Leaving us with five factories where five can be used for trade. Um, hmm. Honestly, I think construction speed might be better. 23rd of July and 64. Let's go with speed. It's only minus 0.1, so that's not too bad. And on July 23rd, goes up by, what, three months or something? Enemies defeated. Let's see, July, June, May, April. Three-ish, 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 four-ish month. That's not bad. Now, can I raid them? I would love to raid them. So now the Luftwaffe bombings probably are going to stop. Hopefully sometime soon. And everything is falling apart. Hopefully this is not glitched to the point where I have to basically reload. I don't think it is. Because actually... That's, actually, there's actually with Cutting Room Floor Patch G that we're playing on... Um, yeah, I've got a few new portraits. But the bombing stopped. There we go. For a long time, life is a in a very large portion of Russia been defined by the German terror bombing campaign. An entire generation of Russians have grown up in blasted ruins, always watching the skies, and ready to run to cover the moment the dark figures of the bombers themselves are spotted. An entire generation of government, whatever the ideology, has struggled with establishing infrastructure or an industrial base of any kind, and what little is built is often promptly destroyed. But not anymore. Millions of Russians have not had to make desperate runs for, to safety for, for days. Repairs or repairs to civilian and military infrastructure has progressed, and up in destroyed in turn. Now construction is still standing, and realization is dawned, the bombers have stopped. To those with access to information from the outside, it is believed that the civil chaos now engulfing the hated Reich and its colonial extensions in the Reich's commissariats has rendered it impossible for their aerial efforts to continue. To those without, it is believed by many to be a gift from God. Even as ordinary Russians celebrate with something approaching delirium, however, others speak of dark clouds on the horizon. The many Russian statelets, no longer suffering paralysis at the bombs of the Germans, are now free to look outwards. Only time will tell how they choose to proceed. Clear skies and dark clouds. Is it time for focus yet? Oh, come on. Oh, we can buy some more stuff, hopefully. Uh, what do we need? Guns, a sport equipment, or art artillery? An empty tank, but I'm going to get some artillery if possible. Shvido, maybe give it a few more days, and then maybe we'll have something here. Please, please. Oh, if we can just buy all that stuff, I'm just going to go ahead and try it, because that's like super necessary. Oh, a little bit of lag. All right, I'm going to give it a few more weeks and see if there's anything else that's going to happen. If not, oh, vacuum tubing, that's nice. You know what? Here's what we're going to do. 1960, we're almost done with that stuff. So, ah, new hope. There we go. The Ozzab looked out at the little patch of forest near his quarters. How long it had been tormented by the black bombers with Luftwaffe crosses, doing damage only to the soil. It was nearly stripped bare, branches and leaves, ever the evergreen trees barely green anymore, but they had endured. And now it had been quiet for the sky for three days straight. It felt a lump in its throat. Behind him were the days of Karbyshev and his guiding hand. The days when he could afford to take orders and be soldier. Now he would have to lead it. The fate of the Russian nation all on his shoulders. Out of all the officers in the league, Karbyshev had trusted him. Was he really ready? All of Russia was against them. The world would be as well once they saw the strength of the Russian nation united. And on the ultimate foe, Germany would not sit idly by and wait for his destruction. Surely this was hopeless. What he wanted most was to do was to crawl back to, into a bunker and forget what he'd ever been born, and forget Karbyshev's impossible dream and become just another officer to run. But that would not do. Russia needed a leader, and thought, and though he would be an imperfect instrument, he would act. He would look into the heroes of the first trial, to, per, to be proud of the Russian nation, and to Karbyshev's determination for his strength. All the fear of what he had to be and the doubts of what he was were cast aside by a newly, newfound clarity of purpose. He was Russia's last best hope for na national salvation. He stopped staring at the forest. There was much that needed to be done, as much as that be prepared for the coming trial, and he would do it. And by opposing that, by, by opposing, end them. Uh, I didn't even talk about any of the comments yet, but we'll do that after as soon as we do this stuff.
There's guys. Uh, the clock ticks. The calendar is checked. There is silence. There's been silence for years. What fells like felt like an incredible number of days. The German bombers flew over our skies, dropping German bombs on our people. After a while, we adjusted our lives, created new routines and regimens. We worked around the bombings, and our lives worked around the German. Casualties were minimized, and industrial protection was maximized. Now, there's only silence. No distant, no familiar distant roar of airplane engines, no familiar rumble of German rolling thunder. There are no more bombers, no more bombs. What happened to the routine that is no longer needed? It's discarded. With the end of the bombings, brief brings the beginning of a new phase in our plans. Russia will be ours. The task ahead. While our skies are clear, our agendas certainly are not. With the end of the bombings came the beginning of our plan to take all of Russia for the Black League. However, while we plan to be masters of the Russian people soon, intense preparations must be made for every, for even the most rudimentary of conquests. Every possible detail, from the most basic weather patterns or the behavior of our enemy soldiers, must be taken into account. To conquer all of Russia from the anarchy that is gripped requires precise organization and a strong state, both in the military, from the largest armies down to a single man. As well as the economy, which must be geared entirely towards our wars. First against those who had divided our people, then against those who would be sought to destroy us. Our work is cut out for us, but the task is clear ahead. Uh, comments. Uh, let's see. Don't try to cause nuclear war between us and Germany. I'll try my best. You know, nuclear war is cool and all, but nuclear war means we die, which isn't great, but, you know, it is what it is. If you'd like to read about the Taos equipment. Oh, it looks like uh, England's probably going apart. Go right ahead, but excellent. Uh, so, someone recommends I play as TNO China. Uh, yes, I do would like I would really like to play as China someday, the Republic of China, as well as Yunnan, and do the National Protection Army or Alliance or whatever it is. So, yeah, that would be really cool. We play as Luhan. So they do have a unique focus tree, which is really cool. So I've heard it's very difficult to do, but you know, I'll probably try it sometime. Do not see this Crimea and Buk Bukharin without the hard K. Yeah, no hard K in Bukharin. So it is what it is. And now, it is time to fund the Omsk Transmash. Omsk Transmash is one of the many subdivisions of the large military industrial complex it calls Omsk home. They have, for quite some time, been experimenting with modern armored designs, which our high command once scoffed at, snubbing it into obscurity, as they refuse to fund it or pay any interest. However, armor undoubtedly is incredibly effective on the battlefield, as much as the old guard hated to admit it. Omsk Transmash needs to be put at the forefront of our interests, and the armor that it produces needs to be integrated into our army. This will help maximize our efficiency and minimize our casualties when dealing with our opposition in the reunification of Russia, not to mention the fact that it will allow us to achieve battlefield superiority at the early stages of our efforts, and we get more industrial expertise, which is absolutely welcomed. Now, let's take a look at Germany. They've fallen apart. Speer's gone. Hedrich is dying. It's going to be left either to Bowman or Goring, and the world's kind of killing itself, just as we like. An elite force. Ooh, army... Uh, professionalism rapidly improves. Don't mind me. The collapse of Russia led living conditions throughout our nation to plummet towards abysmal levels, as if people begin slaughtering one another in the name of empty ideologies and greed. While this is indeed a tragedy, one of the highest order is that it had some beneficial side effects, including the readily available availability of men who are already already predisposed towards training and fighting in the most desperate or extreme circumstances. This, combined with the regular training regimens and uh, profound demand for discipline, has resulted in the creation of the, the Black League's elite forces. Unparalleled by arrivals to the West or East, and for good reason. This elite force must be prepared for the oncoming struggles. Training regimens will be increased, patrols intensified, and raids across our enemy's borders will be made even deadlier. When the time comes, our soldiers will be ready. Ooh, and the division template. Oh, uh, this will be going bye bye, which is not good. Um, if that's a case, and we were also ready off screen as well. Um, is that oh? Editing of will be training of disbanded plate and training or disbanding of units. Chernogardiva, which is this one. So the one that's 15 combat with is going to go bye bye. Which, okay, so most of these guys are not that. It's this unit that can't. Oh god, we're actually lose a division. Holy cow, that's not good. That's really, really not good for us. After that, the Black Hand of Yazov. Oh, look at that. It's going to cost a little bit more, but the first batch. For as long as Alonia could remember, she and everyone she knew had worked in the factories. They assembled guns all day, ate once in the morning and once in the evening, slept in the cramped barracks, and began the cycle again in the next day. This was the daily life of a member of Cadre 622970. And aside from the weather, nothing ever changed much until a few weeks ago. The factory announced the transfer of several Cadres to a new manufactory, including hers. Alonia had clocked out for the last time, marched her marched back to her barracks, packed her meager belongings, and assembled at the gate to await transport. After a long bumpy ride of the truck stopped before another, newer gate that read Omstransmash, behind it read the rest of her life waited. 
At first, the new equipment, the instructors expected her to handle baffled her. This place was unlike anything everyone, anyone in Okaja had seen. None of them had any idea of what a place like this might assemble, until the overseer took them to see the prototype. It was a tar tank, larger than any vehicle Alonia had ever seen, and sporting a cannon twice as long as she was tall. The overseer explained that the league had selected, selected them to assemble the next generation of Russian armor, and starting tomorrow, they would be given their stations and taught how to serve the new purpose. The next week had been a flurry of lectures and tutorials and demonstrations. Alonia's assignment was to attach the cannon to the turret. It was a backbreaking labor, far harder than her old job had been, but she approached it with enthusiasm. Every day, more tanks rolled out of the factory, ready for the battles ahead of them. The words of the overseer's speech stuck with her. The machines she produced would be on the front line, avenging the motherland and punishing those who had betrayed Russia. Alonia couldn't have been more proud. She thought of them as her own children. Whoa, we get tanks? Whoa, that's actually really cool. Alright, so, now we have two loot. Payments are gone. Equipment. Oh, actually, equipment is really good to get. We're going to maximize equipment as much as we possibly can. Nice. The Black End of Yazov created an intelligence agency, but also enhanced training programs to help our army professionalism. There's nothing but shame to be had in weakness. We were weak once, and it cost our people everything. Our army will not be weak, our soldiers not feeble. Our intensive training programs, which are the pride of the armed forces, will be made even more intensive. New initiatives, or initiatives, yeah, organized, and new plans implemented. We need to find ourselves, and more now more than ever, and the best soldiers to fight and die for our cause. The weak should be, no, need to be, weeded out from our armies and shamed as members of the old Russia, barely fit to operate the industrial machinery that churns out the weapons of war that the more, their more deserving counterparts need in the coming months. Those who survive, however, through sheer willpower, determination, and skill will find themselves a place in the best army Russia has ever witnessed, which is very, very good thing with more attack defense and more army professionalism. Don't mind if we do. Anything else here? All right, so industrial buildup, don't mind if we do. Thank you. And research is coming along. Ten days, we'll have a better land auction. The Black Hand of Yazov, though. Glav Kolvark Yazov knows well the dangers of unrestricted, unobserved subordinates. This applies to not only the officers who serve them, but those that serve them, and so on. All the way down to the newest inductee of our army, or even lower, those who do not belong to our armed forces. The ones working in factories and scratching away the meager existences in the cities and beyond. The head of the Black League has thus organized the creation of a new internal security directorate, which has colloquially become known as the Black Hand integrated with the, within the League, and answering directly to Yazov himself. The Black Hand's primary directive is to ensure that the security and stability of the League, rooting out dissidents and those not fit to serve us. I mean, like the group of from uh, Serbia? Ooh, yeah, let's grab that one. Nice. Very nice. How's construction going? Well, it's looking a little better. Yeah, if we were to do this, they still don't complete it. Jesus. So, infrastructure all the way. We got five days left. And we got quite a few months for this left. Woof! Ah, uh, political interference. Three a month is not bad. More stability, more political power. Good, good, good. And after that, we should choose something else, shall we? Scattered depots. Oh, that's actually really good. We need that anti tank. Tesser metal. Starts a war between us and them. Uh, I want to have a little border war. But on guns and givings. The Mikhail Voronin uh, was a powerful tool. Oh, we already read this one. We already read this one. All is forgiven. The best of the league, though. Arkady stood at the auditorium, not shivering despite the cold. His similarly stalwart cadre brothers stood around him. In total, there were 15 cadres assembled that morning, waiting to be inducted into the ranks of the Black Guard, the finest soldiers in the Black League. Arkady and his brothers had endured months of grueling training to reach this point. Not all of them had made it. Some of them had flunked out, while others had broken under the weeks of physical and mental torment they'd endured. There was no room for weakness in the ranks of the Black Guard, and those who survived the training had no weakness left in them. Arkady considered this fact without pride, and for pride had no place in the Guard either. A cadre of 183275 called the captain overseeing the ceremony. Arcady's cadre marched through, uh, towards the stage. The captain began reading their names off one by one. Each soldier crossed the stage, saluted the captain, and proceeded down the stairs, a newly inaugurated member of the Black Guard. There was no celebration of the occasion. The guards could celebrate when they had revenged Russia, but until that day they would be allowed no joy, no sense of accomplishment. Glaskov Arcady. Arcady took the short walk towards the podium, gave a crisp salute to the captain, and exited the stage. As he walked down the stairs, he felt a spark of pride in his new stasis. He crushed his last internal rebellion. He was truly a member of the Guard now, and after the last graduate had crossed the stage, the captain approached the podium. We are now all members of the Black Guard, the motherland's last, best hope for revenge. We will now recite the oath of all the All-Russian Black League to end your induction. Three hundred voices rang out in unison, I believe, before all else, in Russia. One indivisible and invincible test their mettle. The West Siberian People's Republic, the former master of the region, had seen it fit too, despite all odds, remain a serious geopolitical contender in the region. Uh, Lazar Kaganovich's failed state struggled into existence and has proven more resilient than the Glav Kolverk had initially believed to be. 
It's time to gauge your strength and test your metal by crossing the borders and burning down towns loyal to two men to merit a response from their armed forces. Not only will it give us a good idea of how strong willed and well equipped the People's Republic's army is, it will also give our soldiers some of the more pr practical experience of warfare outside of hunting down bandits and performing war games with one another. The People's Republic may have struggled into this role, but it, in the coming months, we will make sure that, that it slips silently out of it. Good. Seven step. Huh? Very good. Oh, I want this one. Eh, that stuff is okay. Cool. Oh, there goes Greece. Goodbye, Greece. And after that, we shall do scatter depots. After the Black Am. Sunday, May 6th. Lev Forodov, an outspoken critic of the Black League's leadership, fails to return to his barracks after the end of his shift at the factory. Sounds kind of familiar. His cadre members inquire into his whereabouts. Their overseer informs him that he was reassigned and not to look over into the matter any further. May 22nd. Uh, Tuesday. The Vasilyev family refuses to allow the League planners to merge their private farm into an agricultural work site. A week later, having not seen or heard from them, a neighbor visits the farm to investigate. He finds the farm abandoned, but with all the belongings of the Vasilyev still present and half-eaten meals sitting on the table. The neighbor alerts the authorities of the disappearance, and the farm is soon consolidated. Friday, June 1st. Residents of the apartment block 33486 report seeing an unfamiliar man lurking outside the building for several hours. At roughly 1.30 a.m. on June 2nd, Alexander Kozlov fails or falls from the window of his 8th-story apartment building to his death. Kozlov's neighbors had reported he harbored sympathies for Lazar Kognovich and the West Siberian People's Republic. Sanitation workers disposed of his body, and the incident is never investigated. Monday, June 11th, Katya Morozova, age 7, is last seen walking home from her youth instruction center. Her father, Artyom, a logistics officer in the Black League, had recently come under suspicion for trafficking black market goods. Several days after her dis disappearance, he turned himself into the director of internal security and confessed to the crime of smuggling. On June 18th, a firing squad executes Artyom for his crimes. The search for Katya is called off on June 21st. The League's grip tightens. Good. And scatter depots. Our soldiers need not just to be equipped with the best weapons that we can give them, but also need to be prepared to have the resupply themselves in case that our initial reunification wars go longer than expected. The High Command has already begun preparing supply depots, built in the most utter secrecy and hidden from the people at large, to be scattered across the territory that we control. Even if a unit or a single soldier gets separated from the main force, he will be able to fight on no matter the cost or his needs. Of course, checks will need to be put in place. Every depot uh, will be equipped with necessary tools to destroy it in case the enemies intend to capture it for their own purposes, and the Black Hand even agents will be present at each one to ensure that the material is going to see fit to those who need it. Good. And now, I can turn off the Uh This one's probably a little bit better to do. So does that really help us out? Oh, that's, it. that's not bad. Nine? If we did this one now, we can still not complete it, which is just god-awful. Oof. Test the metal. Wow, Hamlet already won. Hamlet seems to be winning qu pretty quickly in my TNO games at the time, as of late. And we have a border war with these guys now, which is very good with us. Infiltrate our enemies. One of the Black League's strengths is the fact that we tout security and secrecy above all else. Many of our neighbors refer to the territory that we control as a black hole of Omsk, re referencing the city that we call our capital. But we have sympathizers all throughout the region, brave men who are willing to do what's necessary to help the Black League get ahead in a quest for the reunification of Russia. These sympathizers, however, need a little nudging and assistance from our organization, and they will get just that. Karamad Yazov has asked that plans are drawn up to send infiltrators, some of the most ideologically committed and experienced members of our organization, into the West Siberian People's Republic to destabilize it and otherwise wreak havoc prior to our invasion. The weaknesses exposed. Yazov struck a match and gently lit the candle by his desk. It was nice to have a dull orange glow just before bed. However, there was too much to read and too much to write for him to sink back into the sweeter dreams. There was a typewritten uh, report on his desk from recent fighting on the border with two men. He had personally requested that he be sent major action, after action reports from that sector. It was still smudged with grease. After action report from Vitya Sector. CC. Kapitan Alexei Kurchikov. Kodras involved. Uh, those numbers up there. Path of Kodra... 102821 encountered enemy positions at 0930. Positions radioed in to Kadra 209813 and 205913 for more bombardment. Additional reinforcements brought up to the firing line. Two RDSs. He fired from each light mortar team in sequence. Patrol effective and calibrations 20 RDS. He fired for effective. For effect, hits on many enemy positions. Assaulted positions at 0955 with suppressive fire provided by MMG teams. Positions cleared and MMG teams moved out to prevent counterattack. Gadra 108302 radio, radioed reports of movement on left flank at, 010, at 1015. Enemy assault began at 
at the same number, with each movement on each flank. A bombardment from heavy mortars. Cadre 108302 attacked on its own initiative at 1025 to break up enemy assault on left flank. Recommended condemnation or commend commendation for cadre 108302. Front and right flank held. Advanced positions maintained for the remainder of day. Friendly casualty rate, 15 dead, 41 wounded. Estimated enemy casualties, 40 dead, 80 wounded. Yazov have been reading reports like this all day. Pitch battles with a reasonably determined enemy. However, they seem to be no match for their firepower to determination with the soldiers. He allowed himself to be proud. This was progress. They were fighting real force now, comparable and even superior to the best that Sabir could muster. Maybe with sound rest his tired eyes. They removed his cap and tossed it onto the desk. Tomorrow was another day. There will be more reports to read. He put a small note at the bottom of the page before blowing out the candle. Commend 108302. Nice. Oh, we get another guy here. Fyodor Yegorov. Nice. Very good. And I'll do one more focus. Oh, I'll treat our enemies and the drums of war, and then maybe we'll call it an episode. I think that would be very good for us. <sighs> I wish I could get more loot, though. I really wish I could raid my enemies. Or raid our enemies, really. But, hopefully we'll have one loot. And maybe people want to attack us? Oh. I guess, well, Pavlodar is gone now. Bayerzan Mamishuli. Alright. Scattered Epos. Bandit Plague. Kazakh Red Army. Infiltrate our enemies, my friends. And then follow up with the drums of war. Oh. Okay, cool. Our soldiers are trained, their guns are primed, our enemies are identified, their state disrupted. In the short time between the end of the German bombings and now, it seems as if our administration has become completely revolutionized. We've gone from barely surviving, living from day to day to the next to prepare for the reunification of Russia and that long end of our longtime rivals based in two men. Too much work has been done now. Too many people have struggled and died. The great trial beckons, but for now, Yazov must be content with tackling or taking one step forward towards it. And this is a step that we've already ready to take. The end of Lazvar Kagal. Kaganovich and his rum state. The drums of war are beating and our soldiers march to the rhythm. We must go to war. Train your recruits. Uh, sure. Sounds good to me. Hey, I was wondering where we'd get another division. Thank goodness. Oh, there goes As part of Aslan. I want as much attack as humanly possible on the border with uh, these guys. That'd be good. Anything here? Uh, silence Descent. Uh, I don't really want to do that, but we'll do it anyways, just because we can. Oh, wait. Where are we at? Hmm. 45%. Huh. Infiltration units. Comrades, what we have is a simple proposal. Alexander Sakharovsky, the foreign minister and expert of the ungentlemanly aspects of warfare and espionage, walked up to the front of the room and addressed the symbol hierarchy. Refugees have been a constant problem for ourselves and our neighbors. However, these refugees can be a useful intelligence asset if used properly. Not only can we extract information from them about the conditions in surrounding states, but we can use them as cover for infiltration. Moving on our own agents in with the refugees will be far more plausible and less risky than attempting either border crossings or individual infiltration. If they are turned away, no harm done. If they are let through, then they are already intermingled with the general population. This proposal would require essentially no added costs, merely some cards and hidden communications equipment, all of which are readily available. I look forward to seeing this tested soon. Quite ingenious. Anything else? Uh, do we need more artillery? We probably do. No, we actually have 300 some pieces. Not bad. The drums of wall. And I want to see what happens after this focus. So, power tools, not looking too bad. Novo Sibirsk is really trying to kill people off very quickly. They have the means to, of course, but... 3 to 5, 3 to 7 divisions, not bad. Uh, I don't want to... Hmm. That's only 10 political power, why not? I don't want to do payments to them, though. That's my main gripe with them for now. Oh, do they become something else? No, they look... I thought they looked a little different. 54. Oh, political power is not bad. Uh, Anti-tank is not good. Guns are not bad. The drums of war and on the road to war. When the bombs ceased to fall, we celebrated twice. The first was for the end of a miserable existence in shelters and underground bunkers. No more do the people of Russia need to tremble and quail in terror at the sounds of bombers far overhead. The second, though, was for the coming of another war. A war that will be rife with glory and honor killings. Uh, the war for all of Mother Russia. Our enemies at home trouble us no more. They have been given new insights into our cause and how far we are willing to go in the pursuit of vengeance. Such lessons will be imparted with more equal measures to any who do not serve the motherland, beginning with their old comrades to the north. Which... Oh, yeah, let's do some art, uh, artillery barrages. That's nice. Let's grab some of this too. Ground support. I was hoping that we would be able to go to war immediately, but it doesn't appear. So, but if you enjoyed this episode, guys, consider leaving a like, subscribe if you're new, check out my Discord link in the description below, and I'll see you tomorrow when we will go to war and start trying our best to beat up our enemies. Thanks for watching. Have a great rest of your day.